In this video, I will introduce the theorem known as L'Hopital's rule. I want to explain what the theorem says and when it does or doesn't apply. And then I will work out some examples in the next video. L'Hopital's rule is a tool that helps us compute limits. Specifically, let's look at these four examples on the screen. They are all limits of quotients, and they are all indeterminate forms of type 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infinity. They are all examples where to compute the limit you cannot just look at the numerator and denominator separately because we always get an indeterminate form. L'Hopital's rules provide us with something we can do to attack all of this so that we are not stuck. So what does this theorem say? I'm going to begin with two functions, f and g, a real number a, and I want to compute the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x. Well, the theorem actually is more general than that. The theorem also works for limits at infinity and limits at minus infinity and also for side limits for all those types. For simplicity, I'm going to write a statement only for limits as x approaches a number a, but the theorem is still true for all those other types of limits as well. And what this theorem says is that under certain conditions that I will go into in a moment, the limit of f divided by g is the same as the limit of f prime divided by g prime. How would this be helpful? Well, normally the situation is that I want to compute the first limit, and that's a difficult limit and we don't know how to do it. So instead, we compute the second limit that hopefully is easier. And that happens often because when we take derivatives of functions, they simplify a little bit. Now, what are the conditions for this theorem to work? The most important one, I wouldn't put it first, but it's the most important one, is that this only work when the limit I'm trying to compute, the limit of f over g, is an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0 or plus or minus infinity divided by plus or minus infinity. What that means is that for this to work, either the limit of the numerator and the limit of the denominator are both 0 separately, or each one of them is separately either plus infinity or minus infinity. Notice that those are the only indeterminate forms of quotients. So if I'm in any other situation, then I'm not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. But luckily, if I'm in any other situation, I don't need L'Hopital's rule because I wouldn't have an indeterminate form and then I would have been done and I had no doubt about what the limit was. So most important, this rule only applies when I get an indeterminate form, 0 over 0 and plus minus infinity divided by plus minus infinity. Apart from this, there are two technical conditions for the question to even make sense. First, I need to require f and g to be differentiable as x approaches a, otherwise it makes no sense to take derivatives. When I say as x approaches a, I mean when x is close to a, but not necessarily a. It doesn't matter if they're not differentiable at a. And then I'm also going to require that g and g prime are never zero as x approaches a. So again, when x is close to a, not necessarily a. Otherwise, I cannot even write the function f divided by g or f prime divided by g prime when x is close to a, because I could be divided by zero. And if I cannot write those functions, then I cannot make sense of the limits. So those are technical conditions without which the question is not even well posed. But there is a fourth condition that we often forget because it doesn't come into play often, but that is very important. For this theorem to be true, I also need to request that the second limit, the limit of f prime over g prime, either exists or is infinity or is minus infinity. Otherwise, the theorem does not apply. And let me elaborate on this because as I said, this is something we often forget. This means that if the second limit, the limit of f prime over g prime exists, then I can conclude the limit of f over g also exists and is equal. If the limit of f prime over g prime is infinity, then I can conclude the limit of f over g is infinity as well. If the limit of f prime over g prime is minus infinity, then I can conclude the limit of f over g is minus infinity. But if the limit of f prime over g prime does not exist for a different reason, say it is some function that oscillates in a weird way and that's why the limit doesn't exist, then I can draw no conclusion about the original limit. The original limit may well exist and be anything, or perhaps it doesn't exist. So for the theorem to apply, I need the second limit to either exist or be infinity or be minus infinity. And that's it, that's the theorem. What about the proof? Well, the proof is rather long because this is not just one theorem, it's a lot of theorems. It's a separate theorem for 0 divided by 0 and for infinity divided by infinity. And there's also a separate theorem for limits at a point A, at a real number, or at infinity, or at minus infinity, or side limits, so it's a lot of them. We normally prove one of them from scratch and then reduce the rest of the versions to it. And the proof of this theorem relies on the mean value theorem, or rather on a variant of the mean value theorem. I'm not going to present the proof here. If you're interested, this appears in every calculus textbook. Instead, I would rather focus in presenting examples and showing how to use this to actually compute limits. So, 
In the next video, I will work out a few examples from beginning to end to see how to compute limits with this theorem. And then in the one after that, I will present an example on when this pesky condition for comes into play, a situation where we are not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule, but if we don't notice and we use it anyway, we get a wrong result.